Hi guys, welcome back to Charmed Intuition Tarot. So for today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. And basically, I just thought we would have a bit of a hangout video. So I've got all my charms here. And I think it would be fun to just sort of sort through some charms. My mom found me some new charms today. So we'll go through these together. And just sort of sort through them a bit. Just as something relaxing to do. I also have some cards that I really want to show you that I've been enjoying lately. I went shopping today and bought a new deck as well. I'd like to show you that. So just sort of a bit of a hangout. Let me just show you what I have going on here. Sorry for the interruption. I ended up adding a quick review of this mermaid handbook. So I just wanted to quickly include this so that you could skip ahead to the timestamp if you want to um, watch the review on this. Whenever I would see it in stores, it was always covered in plastic. So I'll just give you a quick little preview of this really interesting book. It's very beautiful. And this was the deck that I was talking about that I got today. I didn't end up reviewing it, well, I did, but then I ended, I didn't end up including it. Um, but really cool, cool deck. I'll just show you guys really quickly. Magical Mermaids and Dolphins. Um, I could do a more like a flip through actual review of it um, very soon. But I just wanted to show you the one that I did pick up. But we'll get back to the intro. So yeah, today I went out. I got a new deck. I didn't plan to go, but I got a new deck. And I got some new crystals. And this one in particular I'm super excited about. So I'd like to show you that. But basically, today's video is a bit different because I had picked up a bit of a stomach bug. So for the past couple days, I've been pretty much laying on the couch, <laughs> just watching Netflix and trying to rest. But today I feel awesome. I feel back to normal. So before we resume our regular pick, pick of cards, I thought we would just sort of have a, a little hangout video. So I have some decks to show you and the new deck I got today. But first, let's see what my mom found me. She's so cute. This little glad or little glad bag closure thing. So that's the thing. If you start collecting charms, guys, like number one, it's addicting to start, you know, finding them. And whenever you go to jewelry stores or craft stores, it's usually the first aisle that I go to. And I'm always on a mission to find charms. So if you tell people that you're looking for small objects, little jewelry items or different things like that, usually they'll start saving them for you. So just one thing to keep in mind if you're having trouble finding them. So let's see what oh, let's see what my mom found. Okay. Okay, this one's interesting. It looks like she had oh wow. So it looks like this came off of a necklace or something. So this is super cool. And the thing is, is once you get them, you can kind of take a look and see what they mean to you, see what meaning you can think of. So when I don't know what a charm is going to mean, or if I haven't added it to my collection yet, I put it in a jar um, so that I can take some time to figure out what each, what each charm means. So that's one thing to consider. So what else? Okay, this I think is super cool. Now this is a bit big for my charm set, but I think I could use it for the items for picking a card. I could use this for one of the items. You guys know I always have different unique items. It's really cool though. Look at that. So I'll definitely keep that. That's awesome. If you guys can think of a meaning for these, definitely let me know. This looks like a bone. Then it looks like I have a, is this a peso? Yeah, I think it's a peso. That's super cool. I think I had picked this up when I was in Mexico last time and brought this home for her. So I might add that to my collection too. Oh, we're cute. So it's like this little dress here. So yeah, if you guys are picking up any meanings or significance to any of these charms, definitely let me know. The purse I love and I think I already know what I want it to mean. But again, I'm going to go through them sort of and... I've got these two hearts here. Oh, this heart has a crystal in it. Oh, they both do. Oh, no, this one's missing one. And I love dogs, <laughs> which I do. So that might have some significance. Maybe when doing a reading, if this comes up, it could be talking about a family pet or something. Very cool. So if any of these you know, make you think of a certain meaning, definitely let me know. I'm just going to add them into the bag for now. And we'll go through the charms here. And 
I just want to show you some new ones and we'll just sort of go through them a bit. So, okay, here's some new ones. So what I did was I went to a thrift store and if you go to a thrift store, go to the game section and you can usually find Monopoly games. Now I've always had Monopoly pieces in my charm set. So for instance, let's just, there's the classic Monopoly pieces that we all are familiar with, like this one, for instance. And this one always represents being defensive. We also have the wheelbarrow here. This is from the classic Monopoly game. But a lot of the themed Monopoly games, like there's Catopoly, there's Lord of the Rings <laughs> Monopoly, there's all sorts of Monopolies, Harry Potter, pretty much anything that you could be interested in, there's a Monopoly game for it. So I found at a thrift store the Simpsons Monopoly, and I basically just took the pieces and figured out what significance the pieces had. So I didn't take all of them, but I did take the donut. What else do we have from the, the school bus? came from the Simpsons Monopoly game. So, this alien came from the Simpsons game. And I don't have an alien or anything alien like in my charm set, so I thought that was cool. And then this statue came in it. So the thing is, is each charm, oh, and here's Bart Simpson driving a car. Now, I know that they're the Simpsons, but you can relate a meaning to pretty much anything. So the alien, for example, might represent something that's very unfamiliar or something you're, you're a little bit nervous about that's unfamiliar. And like I always say, guys, each charm is going to have significant meaning to you for a personal reason. So that's the beauty of charm casting is that it's going to be very personal. You can pretty much find anything and apply a meaning to it. And then in a reading with other charms, it'll have a significant message for you. So let's see what other ones are new lately. Oh, I received this in the mail. And this is Aladdin's Lamp. And this came from the channel that does my illustrations and she is amazing and the channel name is phoenix energy so i will link her down below but she was kind enough to send me some charms and this was one of them and i don't have anything like this so i was super excited to get this Honestly, my favorite charms are the ones that are extremely unique, things that you don't find very often. So I found this in a antique shop and basically the woman had a jewelry box and just random little things in it. She had some little old Cracker Jack pieces like this and she had this piece here and just sort of random little things inside the little jewelry box. And that's really where you find the unique things that you don't see every day. It's really easy to go to a charm shop and find something like this or a jewelry shop, which are cool. I love these charms, but my favorite charms are the super unique ones that are very rare. Those are my favorites. So this is an old Cracker Jack piece as well. This mask came off of a necklace and when it lands upside down, I think of being honest, being true to who you are, being very upfront and when it lands this way, I look at it as hiding something or being, you know, hiding behind a mask, not being fully who you are. So again, you can apply any meaning. And a lot of charms people have given me, especially friends. This came from Serena B Creative. The YouTube channel. I'll link her down below as well. This one I made, basically it was a little empty bottle and I put in a little piece of paper, so message in a bottle, so I love getting this one. And a lot of these pieces I've had honestly since I was little. Let's try and find an example. So aside from the Monopoly pieces, and the Scrabble pieces, like this little Coca-Cola bottle came from a little curio cabinet that my mom had and there was basically like all these little bottles and she gave me one for my charm set. Go 
Oh, I know one. I know one to show you. Oh, this came off of an outfit I had when I was young. It's a little sunflower, sunflower button. And a lot of you find that this charm, you get it a lot. So if you get this one a lot, to me, this is all about optimism because sunflowers, they face the sun and they'll turn to face the sun and the warmth. So to me, that's about focusing on the positive. So I do love this charm. And there's all sorts of different sizes too, you'll notice. Like you don't have to get all of the same size. It's nice when they're roughly about the same size, but they definitely don't have to be. I mean, we have some like this, for instance, is rather large. And then we have tiny ones like, like this one. So it really depends on what you have. I would say this is probably the biggest charm that I have. Oh, this is one that I had when I was little. This came out of a Kinder Surprise. And this is back when Kinder Surprise toys were actually... I don't know if you can, if you, I know in the States you guys don't have Kinder Surprise or I don't know if they're illegal because of the toys inside of the chocolate, but this came out of a Kinder Surprise and it's a solid little piece. Like it's really solid and it's a little pirate. So I've, I've had this forever. So when I first put my initial charm set together, it was really small. It was in, and I actually it sort of got separated, um, over time and I never really, you know, I didn't. I didn't pay much attention to it and then when I was sort of taking my cards out again and really exploring tarot that's when I brought my charm set out so if don't be discouraged if your set is really small I mean my first set was just in a tiny little organza bag it was really small and it just had a few different things I think it had a marble in it it had um, this guy in it it had just like random little trinkets jewelry pieces beads and with time it, it's grown and it's definitely grown since I've had my channel and really sort of got it into my charm. So if you're trying to grow your charms, then don't be discouraged. It takes a lot of time. But like I said, as you get into it and you tell people like, look, I'm looking for little jewelry pieces, anything you, you don't want or anything small that you find, people, it is, it's like a treasure hunt and people really enjoy it. So let's see what else we have here. So for example, this piece came off of a jewelry. Uh, bracelet that I found at a thrift store. So sometimes I'll go to thrift stores and find pieces of jewelry and then I'll take it home just to take the charm off and then I'll redonate the jewelry. Some a lot of jewelry makers like to use that stuff too. So remember the moments. I thought that was cute. I like this rainbow. This came from my friend Erica and she was helping her grandmother clean out uh, her house and she brought this home for me and this was super cool. I just love it. it. It's a crystal, but it's in the shape of a teardrop. So to me, this represents, you know, pain leading to something beautiful or tears shed that lead to something good in the end. So it's, it's all about positivity and even though we go through challenges, it can turn into something good. So that's what this charm represents to me. These little binoculars I got at a dollar store. Another Monopoly piece. One thing you can add if you're starting your charm set is an elastic band, and that can represent being flexible, having to be flexible. So I showed you the other donut and I have this donut too. And to me, this donut represents, it can represent sort of treating yourself and decadence because it's gold, it's got that pink frosting. So I look at it more as like a treating yourself type charm. So I like that one. Okay, the turtle spirit. Love that. And another place you can find it is like something like this. So this to me is about persistence. It can be about persistence against challenges too. So something like a screw is a good thing to add. As long as it's not too sharp, you don't want to poke yourself. The other place you can find charms is little pins. So you you guys notice I have a lot of different pins. And they're honestly the perfect size and all of the pictures on them are usually very interesting. So this one came with a recent deck purchase. I believe it was the Lovely Omens Tarot. Uh, she sent a little pin. So I thought that was so perfect. Look at that. And like this one. 
And they're so unique, the little pins. That's what I love about them. So they're really great for, for readings. It's complicated. So if a situation is complicated, sometimes I notice this one comes up. Like I said, marbles are a great place to, to uh, start too with your charms. This piece was made by um, Jonna. And I'll link her channel down below. I am reviewing one of her decks coming up very soon. But I'll link her channel down below. And her, I believe her Etsy shop is my Mystic Thicket, I think it's called. I'll have to, I'll link it down below. But she's amazing. She illustrated um, one of my favorite, actually I'm just going to grab it for you. Sorry guys. Since we're hanging out anyways, I figured I could take my time. So, John illustrated the Higher Intuitions Oracle, and this is a really beautiful deck. I'm going to be doing a review on this very soon, and I have a video with that coming up soon. This pizza is a really cute new one. The words are fun too and what I love about the words is a lot of you guys spell out sentences so sometimes when I'm doing my readings I don't take the time to spell out words with the letters or sentences so I love that you guys are really amazing at spotting out words that's my favorite so this charm is very important to me and basically this penny I found out um, outside of the Hocus Pocus house. So if you know the Hocus, if you've seen Hocus Pocus, so outside of Max and Danny's house, me and my friend were, <clears throat> were just standing there and we looked down, there was two pennies. So, you know, when you go away, they always have these little penny, penny machines that you can go and get a, uh, a memory penny. So basically that's what, that's where this came from. So that's super cool. This door is another one of my favorites. I always look at it as new opportunities, opening the door to something new. Got this little boxing glove. This little bell. Bottle caps are another good place to find charms. This one I always look at as the Ten of Wands because it looks like he's carrying a rather heavy weight up a hill. So it reminds me of the Ten of Wands. I love the charms of the signs. I love these especially for romance readings because a lot of you find that these resonate a lot of the time. Now you'll notice too I've got this tiny little deck of cards. <laughs> this is super cute. Tiny little deck of cards. So I read these just like the tarot. So we've got the Eight of Pentacles here. And we have, let's find another one. Here we have the Two of Pentacles. So those are super fun to, to add to the meaning. This I got at a festival in the summer a couple years ago. It was a necklace. So a lot of these things came off jewelry that I wasn't using. I want to show you guys something that my friend sent me. So she sent me a bunch of charms and I've added a few to my set, but I do like to meditate on each charm and figure out what meaning they have. So I've added a few, but I thought this one was super cool and it had, it's from one of those thermometers and it, but it has a liquid in it and that's why I haven't added it because I'm afraid that if I add it to my charms, it's going to break and then get that liquid all over the place. So I haven't added it, but I don't know. I think it might be strong enough. It's hard to tell. But yeah, you just sort of start collecting and finding them and people send you or save you charms like family and friends. Just sort of ask them, um, you know, if they have any jewelry pieces or anything like that that they're not using. And that's really a good place to start. We have a wedding ring here, an engagement ring. Dice. This little cute frying pan a lot of you guys like. Not 
another one of those pins. I love this compass charm. Oh, this unicorn was my great grandmother's actually. And I'll show you her at the end. I've got a picture of her on my wall. This came off of one of her jewelry boxes. This hand is one of my favorite charms. I like this wooden elephant too. So you guys see how diverse it is. There's all sorts of different things that you can find pretty much anything. If it's small and you can apply meaning to it, you can add it to your charm set. So I definitely encourage you to be creative with it. Like I said, all of my favorite pieces are things that are super unique. Uh, you can even add crystals to your charm set. Like I said, marbles, all sorts of things you can add. So love that. So if you guys want, I can do a whole video of like going through every single charm. So you guys the new crystals that I picked up today. And a lot of you know, I am still learning about crystals i've got crystal books and i love learning about crystals i have certain crystals like fluorite and aventurine and clear quartz that i'm very familiar with i use all the time but it's those newer ones like i love rhodonite i love you know there's a lot of crystals i love bloodstone there's a lot of crystals that i'm very familiar with but then there's a few that i'm still learning about so i always appreciate your help with that but i picked up a few today that i am more familiar with so I got this piece of rhodonite and I'll take it out and show you. So I love this one. I love really unique crystals too. And this one I just liked, I don't know, it looked different than other pieces of rhodonite that I have. I'm going to grab my crystal basket. So these are a few of my crystals here in this basket. So for instance, here's a piece of rhodonite. And here's my new piece. So they're a lot different and that's what I like. I like different versions and different, you know, the colorings being different. I think it's super cool. So I'm just gonna read this to you. So it says, this crystal brings emotional healing and releases blocked energy in the heart chakra. It helps with relationships by stimulating acceptance, forgiveness, and unconditional love. It brings peace and calmness into a relationship. So that's an excellent relationship crystal. Then I got a piece of crackle quartz, which I thought was beautiful. So it's a piece of clear quartz, but if you look here, it's all crackly in the middle, or, or on the inside, I should say. Very cool. And this is all about positivity, clarity, and focus. So it says crackle quartz counteracts negative energy. It is known as an excellent amulet to avoid evil energy. It's also useful when you want to regain positive emotions and will make your thoughts clearer and positivity easier. So I just thought that one was beautiful. And when I read the paper on it, I thought, oh, ever cool. And it's so interesting because you'll find you're, you're really attracted to certain ones. And then it's really interesting to see what the meanings are. So then we have a piece of smoky quartz here. I have a lot of smoky quartz um, in my crystal collection. I'm just very drawn to it. And it says here, excellent after a period of illness or depression for gently restoring energy and optimism. It works on the kidneys and other organs to energetically remove toxins from the body. Smoky quartz is an excellent grounding stone for rebalancing the body. So love these new pieces. I'll add them into my crystal collection here. And I can do a video on all of my crystals, it's just some of my smaller ones, if there's a shell in there. But um, yeah, I really love collecting them. I've always been drawn to crystals. Ever since I was small, I've been just attracted to them. Whenever we would go to gift shops, if we were going on road trips, you know a lot of gift shops, they'll have a little area of crystals and then you can sort of make a grab bag. I don't know if you've ever been to a store that has that, but where I'm from, there's a lot of that. And um, I, that's always where I would run to when I was small. I loved the crystals and the stones. I just, I've always loved that. Even rocks, like walking along the beach, I've always loved interesting rocks. 
so yeah it's always sort of been a an interest of mine so love this so love those three new ones and I just wanted to show you a few of the decks that I've been really enjoying lately I'm just gonna put this over here and I have to give you guys a tour of my tarot room. I know I've been wanting to do that, but I almost want to make sure it's exactly how I want it before I show you. So this is one of my favorites. You've seen it a, long, a lot probably in my videos, and I've had it for a long time. And it is called Sea Melodies by Jessica Lay. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And you can find this on Etsy for sure. And I think, I'm not sure if she's selling it through Amazon, but I will link her Etsy shop below. But they're just small, they're tiny little cards, and they have keywords and a little bit of a meaning on them. And in the corner, there's a different little picture on each one. So these are excellent. I love them as sort of just to add to a tarot reading as some advice or just sort of a clarification. They're excellent for clarification. So let's see what your message for tonight is. Empathy. So there's more beneath the surface. So a lot of you might be encouraged to have some empathy um, with a situation or a person perhaps in your life. But yeah, I just, I really think they're quite beautiful. I love mermaids and I just, I love the little box. It's got a little magnetic closure. I love how it has that glitter in the tail. This is one of my favorites for sure. I have her other deck, which is called Whispering Woods, and it's also very beautiful. But this one is by far my favorite. Love this. So next up is the Ice Cream Oracle. This is another one of my favorites lately. I've been enjoying it. The first time I saw it was on Kittens, Weights, and Tarot and V Love and Crystals. They both have done reviews on it. So if you'd like to see a full review, I can link those down below. But this deck is so much fun and I can't wait to use it in the summer because number one, I love ice cream, but I just think the colors will be really nice in summer readings and I don't know, ice cream just reminds me of the spring and summer. So, but really cool. So there's all different flavors and then keywords. So this deck is excellent for reading if you read intuitively. And it doesn't give you an exact meaning, but it does give you the keywords, which is helpful. But that's what's great about card reading is you are encouraged to read with your intuition. So clean detoxify release. So how would this fit into a romantic reading? You know, you, you sort of look at it, start looking at it that way. Um, candy loaded so social gathering celebration special events banana walnut cracking coats grape coconut avocado love that love that card i think that's so cool chocolate vanilla swirl mint chocolate chip vanilla fig cookies and cream pistachio so there's all different kinds of ice cream, pretty much any kind that you can imagine, and then some keywords. And the artist has definitely put a lot of thought into what keywords she picked relating to the ice cream. So for example, Rocky Road, so adventure, preparation, and challenge. That makes a lot of sense. You know, you think of Rocky Road, that's what you would think of. To me anyways, I think she put a lot of thought into the keywords. And the box is super cute too. And I can link this down below. Strongly recommend this one. I think it's a lot of fun. The other deck that I wanted to show you is the Lovely Omens Tarot. I waited for this for so long. Um, not as far as shipping goes. The shipping was nice and quick. It was just, um, I couldn't find it. It wasn't for sale for a little while. Um, so I don't know if, she, you know, maybe she ran out because it's a beautiful deck. But I'm happy to say um, I found it and it's lovely. Lovely Omens. So I'll just show you here. So I love it. I think it's super cool. So it's, you know what? It reminds me of just the 90s. It actually was what inspired me to do the clueless reading that I did with Brooke a couple months back. I didn't have the deck at the time, but this was the deck that made me think of that movie. But it's just so cool. I just love it. I mean, I can't say enough about it. I believe all of the majors are women and all of the court cards are women too. So this is a very feminine deck. So I've got the death card. We've got super cool. It reminds me of Beetlejuice. Sorry, I didn't put these in order. Strength. 
So I just think they're really beautiful. We've got swords here. There's some wands. Cups. Oh, the cups. I really want to show you a cups card because they're just so adorable. So each cup, like they're all different cups. She's drawn different like teacups, which I do collect as well. So I just love, I just love this deck. I think it's super cool. Very feminine and a lot of fun to work with. A nice little sturdy box too. Very nice. Another deck that I've been enjoying and I learned about this deck on Spiritual Guidance with Nat. So Nat reviewed this deck and I immediately needed it. I just, I know she's got a beautiful collection as well. And this was one of them. And I think this might be my new favorite Oracle deck of all time. So we have self-reflection. Like they're just, you know what? This is the kind of imagery that just speaks to me. I love the artistry here. So Queen of the Moon, I'll just show you the box here. So Queen of the Moon or Oracle, and this is by Stacey DeMarco, and I do like Stacey's decks. I have another one by her. And what I love about these decks and images like this is it really allows you to read intuitively as well. So you've got the main word here, so Wolf Moon Hunger, but you know you can get a lot from the image. Got moon imagery in that one. Like there's, it's just really beautiful. Oh, sorry guys, I should have put it in order. But I can do a full review on it where I show you each card as well. So Surrender, Beauty, Darkness. This reminds me a lot of the Moon card in Tarot. Protection. Let's turn these over here for you guys. Trust. Attraction. Like, that to me is just breathtaking. And I love cards that I can just sort of reflect on. And I tend to, I'll pick one of these every day and just sort of sit it out on my tarot desk and just look at it throughout the day. Power, focus, purity, release, love that. So beautiful deck and I keep it in this little bag just because I use it quite a bit. So I do keep it in the bag and it comes with a guidebook as well. But like I said, if you'd like a review on decks, I can definitely do that. I am planning on doing that. The next deck is the Crystal Spirits Oracle by Call It Baron Reed and artwork by Jenna De La Gretalia. I always am worried I'm not pronouncing her name right, but I love her artwork so much. And this deck is relatively new to me. I love Colette's decks. I have most of them, I would say. There's a few I don't have. Um, but this deck in particular, like I said, I was, I'm was i learning my crystals. I'm learning a lot about crystals. And this deck definitely helps. So she, you've got her little guidebook. Lots of information there. I love her guidebooks. And the cards themselves are just probably one of the most beautiful decks that I've ever seen. So just the imagery and the artwork here. So citrine, that's another one of my favorite crystals. So the thing with this deck is I think it would be an excellent deck to help you learn crystals. Fluorite's one of my favorites because Colette hasn't put a meaning on the card, but I actually like that because it, it number one, it allows you to use your intuition. And then two, you know, it takes the time to sort of learn about each card in particular. So let's, oh, Road Knight. We were just talking about Road Knight. So let's look up Road Knight. So she's got them numbered. So we have 47. So for each crystal, she has the essential meaning. So if you just sort of want to get straight to the point, get the initial meaning, you can, you can do that. There's also sort of a more extensive meaning here and then she has them as it pertains to relationships and as it pertains to prosperity and finances or just you know our life in general and then crystal spirit meditation so how we can meditate and use that crystal day to day so I really love this guidebook I think a lot of thought has gone into this deck 
The pictures, like I said, are just absolutely beautiful. It uses a lot of very familiar crystals like Green Aventurine, one of my favorites. And then there's some really unique ones too. Uh, let's find one that I wasn't as familiar with. Let's see here. So yeah, like I said, a lot of these are very familiar to me, but then this one, for instance, I don't think I've ever seen this crystal, to be quite honest. I don't think I have it in my collection. So it's really sort of fun to learn about each crystal that way. And like I said, a lot of your favorites are probably already on here. So like fluorite, for instance, pyrite's one of my favorites as well, or light emerald. So she's got all sorts of amethyst all sorts of different crystals strongly recommend this deck i really do love call it stacks i love the boxes i love the cards themselves are absolutely beautiful so strongly recommend i recommend all the decks that i reviewed today and i'm going to be continuing to show you guys decks that i enjoy but for today we've got the um, crystal spirits oracle queen of the moon oracle we've got our ice cream oracle C Melodies Oracle, and then for the tarot deck, we have the Lovely Omen. So I will link those down below or at least list the names for you if I can't find the links. Um, but yeah, strongly recommend these. And yeah, I think that's oh, I wanted to show you guys one more thing since we're hanging out, since you guys are with me here, I wanted to show you this little book here. So this is the mermaid handbook that my mom got me for Christmas. Now this is an item that I have looked at every time I go to the store, I take a look at it. I look at it, I turn, cause it was, it's covered in plastic and I always read it. I love mermaids. I'm sure you guys have noticed I have a lot of mermaid things, uh, mermaid decks too. I just love mermaids. So I've always looked at this, at this book and I never bought it for myself because it just seemed like one of those items like, okay, Liz, you don't really need that. So my mom got it for me for Christmas and I was just very, um, very grateful because I really do love it. And basically this would make a fantastic coffee table book or just a gift for anyone in your life that enjoys mermaids. So I'm just going to give you a quick little flip through here. So it has a lot of history about mermaids, the history. Uh, and then it has sort of interesting things like, so this is mermaid tresses. So this is all about um, her hair, mermaid hair. So how to create mermaid hair. So there's lots of like crafts and things you can make too, like make mermaid hair comb. So there's all sorts of things like that. Oh, let's just see here. I don't want to show you every page because, all right. So there's about mermaid inspiration and in fashion, mermaid makeup, all sorts of things, like lots of different crafts you can make. Like mermaid, if you were a mermaid for Halloween, this book I think would be excellent, very useful. So like I said, fashion, mermaids in Hollywood, real life mermaids. So like the mermaids that do this in different various shows. And just the pictures themselves are absolutely gorgeous. So mermaid accessories. And like I said, a history on mermaids, lots of beautiful artwork. I think this book for the artwork alone is beautiful. Like the beautiful images of things that you can make. A lot of mermaid lore too, like different tales and things about mermaids. So I'm sort of flipping through here cause I don't want to show you every page here, but uh, mermaid just honestly, everything you could ever want to know about mermaids is in this book. Modern mermaids, like I said, Pretty much anything about mermaids. There's things about mermaid festivals. I used this page in my last reading, my last pick a card, I believe, because I just loved this picture. Um, so yeah, just really cool book. This would make an excellent gift for someone in your life that loves mermaids. I think this is the kind of book that I think is awesome on a coffee table. Um, just something for your guests to flip through. I think it's super interesting. And just, it's really honestly just nice to have on your shelf. I really like it. I like it as a decor piece. It's really beautiful quality too. Like the, it's just, it's got like the, the gold on it and then the beautiful picture. There's a recipes. There's just all sorts of things in here that make this book super interesting. Just a lot of fun. And I think, you know, we have a lot of books. I'm sure if you're like me, you've got a lot of books that have, you know, a significance for a reason. So for example, you might be learning how to do something. I have lots of how-to books, tons of how-to books, and you have fiction books, and novels, and different things like this. This kind of book though to me is so unique and just something interesting to look at. Um, 
when my you know nieces come over I really am excited to show them this as well it's just a really interesting kind of fun book so if you know anyone who loves mermaids I strongly recommend this and this is by Carolyn Turgeon so really love this book she also has a fairy one which I'm hoping to find as well I haven't seen it at the bookstore so if I find the fairy one I think I'm probably gonna get that one too so that I can have them both on my bookshelf I think they're super interesting so love that and yeah, I'm just going to show you guys the gallery wall that I'm working on and then we will say goodnight. Hey guys, I just wanted to show you my gallery wall and my tarot cupboard. So basically, I got this little piece online um, for only a hundred dollars. A lady was selling it and basically she just wanted to get it out of her house. Um, I, she was moving, so she wanted it out of her house. Yes, the doll moved. Don't worry. It was just the stand. <laughs> don't worry. Um, but yeah, she wanted to get it out of her house because she was moving. And it's honestly the perfect home for my tarot cards. And just, I couldn't believe the price I got it for. This is a piece that if I found it in an antique store, I likely wouldn't have been able to afford it. So yeah, I just keep some things in there. In there I have some candles and some little bottles, things like that, that I use. I have, yeah, my, that's where I do most of my readings. All my cards are kept very safe in here. That doll was my grandma's as well as that apple. I keep my pendulum up there and I'll just show you the gallery wall. So up here we have my great grandma. I called her Gigi and she was very beautiful. And then there is my mom when she was a little girl, super cute. And then here is my grandmother. This is my mom's mom on her wedding day. I'll just let that focus there. Very beautiful. And that's basically just a, a witch picture that I really liked and another picture of my great grandmother. So that's that um, same lady there. And there I have my palmistry fortune telling, telling sign. But yeah, this is where my little uh, tarot readings are done. And then there I just have some of my jewelry. It's all costume jewelry, nothing very fancy. And there I have extra candles and an extra pendulum. And then I keep my little travel makeup bags and things like that in there. So yeah, oh, <laughs> pieces of paper there and there. I just spotted right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this little tour and the hangout video, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it and we'll see you next time.